Art lovers, time for more half-assed reports from the guy on the bike. And, uh, well, boy, this is, uh, this is like a uh, Hollywood opening down here. We're at David Horner on West 19th Street. We're going to run in and see a show by one of today's most recognized and uh, interesting artists, Neil Rausch. They're calling this show At The Well. And uh, it's like a real snazzy opening here. Oh, geez, nice matching clothes here. So we'll uh, make a quick run through, you can catch a little taste of uh, the crowd here and then we'll come back and uh, we look at some of these pieces on a more individual basis. Oh gee, hey, there's Neil right there. Oh, he's a handsome guy. Well, I've uh, been a fan of Neil Rausch for about 15 years. I think that uh, I'd heard about him reading an art forum and things like that. And then I was in Munich, uh, it was in 2000 or 2001, and saw a one-person show that he had at the uh, Haus der Kunst there. And uh, I've been keeping track of his work ever since. This piece is titled Felsenbert. And uh, you can go back and check one of the early calm reports. And uh, I caught him at the, uh, the Met for a little show he had there. And uh, she caught an interview with him, three or four parts. And uh, I actually got a chance to ask him some questions. It's titled Das Horn. And it's big. It's 107 eighths by 120. It's about uh, eight and a half by ten feet, and uh, this has got kind of a uh, toned down palette, mostly the uh, what, English reds, siennas, pale yellows. And it was very uh, interesting with this kind of uh, visual narratives that he builds out, so it got some kind of looks like modernistic sculpture. So hands are, and then uh, you know, with these odd country people standing around celebrating this, and uh, it's got a very, very nice kind of a light touch. Anyway, when I was uh, trying to interview uh, Neo at the Met. Uh, Basically, my German isn't that good, and he came off as not really understanding, but uh, I was later talking to a lady from uh, German TV, and she said she'd been tracking him for two years and that he'd never spoke to the press. This is titled, Am Brunnen, 2014, oil on canvas, 120 by 100 inches. some kind of a fence or whether that relates to maybe a stretched canvas frame. 
and uh, he was juiced up his colors a little bit. You know, uh, I've been keeping track and doing a little research on uh, Neo, and he's got a very interesting backstory. One of the things is, I guess, that uh, his parents died, maybe in a train wreck or a car wreck or something, when he was very young, and uh, so he was he was a ward of the East German state. And uh, I know that he was also a, an Uberleutnung in the East German Army. He was an officer. He wasn't a grunt. He was an officer. And uh, so I think when he decided to go to the uh, academy there in Leipzig, he was uh, probably considered a wonderful example of uh, East German social engineering, maybe. It's titled Marina. And uh, again, we've got this kind of odd narrative going on. It's like a uh, strange mermaid, maybe. And uh, these characters have fished out some kind of uh, crucifix figure. And that's uh, some kind of primitive fetish sculpture or modern sculpture floating in the sky. It's part of the, uh, the interest of uh, looking at a Neo Raj is trying to unravel his narratives and there's always uh, some pretty juicy references to uh, art history and especially, I guess, uh, German or Eastern European art history, which a lot of Americans are not so familiar with. He's getting uh, some crackle in these paint. Ubu den Dachern. Also 120 by 100. Well, one of the things that I uh, kind of liked, look at this, uh, like a cubist section, a rectangle sort of twisted off center. What I always liked about uh, some of his early work was there was a very uh, unapolog unapologetic reference to East German and uh, communist propaganda, and uh, you know he didn't really start to get the kind of attention that he's received in the last ten years until after the wall came down. And uh, he was trained as an academic painter. So like ten by eight and a half. Well, one of the, the questions that I wanted to ask Neo was about uh, the status of uh, the Leipzig Academy, and, and a lot of people. I think he still teaches there, but a lot of people uh, have uh, proposed that the Leipzig Academy would be the. Uh, best example of what has been called the post-socialist art movement and uh, because they do a lot of work with timelines and art movements and stuff like that you could sort of put the Leipzig school right behind the young British artists Damien Hirst and I would say that uh, you know, they're the rebels say that uh, Neil would probably be one of the leading members of the Leipzig School. Oh, this is a real big painting. It's titled Der Blauf. 
fish. This is a diptych. Twenty by 199 and a half inches. Hell, just call it 200 inches. So that's about uh, 10 by 18 and a half feet. Well, I would say that one thing is that um, some of his previous paintings, they had a lot more kind of shifts in perspective, different uh, views of landscapes and scenes laid within each other. And uh, it's a little more simple, although there's still a lot of, uh, lot of complexity here. I think the other thing that I kind of uh, am attracted to is that uh, you know has a kind of uh, bizarre palette. For example, this kind of green face dates to Montagna or even uh, Max Beckman. A lot of this is kind of gaseous greens. Sickly grays, gunmetal blues. You can look at these pieces and see that uh, you know it's all been touched by human hands. Somebody's paws have been working over this painting. You know, there's a lot of uh, underpainting, scraping, correction, and. Uh, As a painter, I think he does a pretty, uh, pretty remarkable job doing that kind of, uh, what you call it, surrealistic expressionism, melding a lot of these things together. Well, this is another extremely large painting. This is an example of what I was talking about, some of his compositional devices, this uh, upper left corner that's kind of a, like a cutout, coloristically jazzed up section laid over the uh, more dour gray section. And here again, we've got these uh, odd narratives. Getting back to uh, the post-socialist uh, art and uh, the Leipzig School, I think probably in the mid-late 90s, be seven or eight years after the the Iron Curtain came down and the uh, Berlin Wall fell, people like Neo and his wife Rosa Loy and this whole academy that they were studying at and then eventually teaching at uh, was kind of looked upon as a some almost like some kind of a prehistoric or pre-modern throwback some kind of a little time capsule because uh, these German communists of course were uh, against uh, avant-garde abstract art, and so you had to be involved in social realism. And uh, it's a nice stool with the red and blue shadows. And, uh, well, I always like the idea of the artist as resisting the establishment or just resisting the status quo. So I think Neo is of doing that. She's got like a little brancusi there in the back. Somebody on a table. 
see kind of a burning building up on the hill. That's the uh, some kind of space needle or a uh, spaceship that's crashed. I don't know. Well, now we're going to see what they've got hidden in the back room here. Wow, more German TV. Well, oh, this is nice. We've got some of uh, Neo's smaller pieces. Actually, when I uh, covered the show at the Met, he had uh, some of these smaller pieces, and they're actually very nice. Uh, Canvas 16 by 14 inches. It's titled Sauger. And uh, a lot of times I think that um, in small paintings you get a chance to see uh, maybe a more unrestrained view of an artist's work. This is titled Roller. Twenty four by forty. Oh, there's that uh, weird car that's in the large painting in the main gallery. And uh, it does have kind of a unique use of this. Uh, English red uh, burnt sienna that it kind of fades into his grays. It's another big piece. Sculptor in. And uh, again, we got uh, these weird structures there. References to some kind of bizarre modernism. This makes me think of Jeff Kuhn's workshop. And then, uh, yeah, that's very odd. You know, it's interesting to see the uh, you know, the different plays of the uh, the shiny versus the matte surfaces. You can see where he's. Uh, Ending his medium with his uh, turp washes. This is a beautiful little piece. Corrector. Cute, we've got a little red elephant. Paddler. Yeah, I'm looking at this and I'm getting kind of a flash of a great uh, German painter called Hans von Marais, who uh, was painting during the 1840s and sort of came in during the end of the Nazarenes movement. Again, we've got a very, some kind of strange narrative going on. Now, I guess that uh, Neo just kind of makes these paintings and then <laughs> after they're done, he analyzes them and tries to figure out exactly what the heck they mean. Duo, 2014 oil on canvas, 14 by 16 inches. You 
know, as nice as this is in a, in a little painting like this, he uses the same kind of details on some of the big paintings, certain areas, and uh, it's a nice contrast. This is James Calm reporting on Neil Rausch at the well. Daffod's Lerner. 19th Street in Chelsea. Thank you, Kate. Something like that. Wow, thanks, Sid. Sure. 70s classic rock? Oh, yeah. Keep it alive, man. <laughs> yeah, man.